Today's video is sponsored by nobility.co.uk, the leading company in selling legal titles in the United Kingdom. Get a 10% discount in any purchase by mentioning Death Row. Sisters have a bond like no other. Whether you're the responsible big sister or the wild child little sister, you know what you have is special and no one else but you better mess with her. You fight. You play together. You borrow each other's clothes. You tease each other. You get into your mom's makeup. Growing up with a sister can be awesome, but it can also be annoying like living with a BFF and the class mean girl all at once. Having a sister is probably the biggest love or hate relationship you'll ever experience. There's nothing quite like a bond between two sisters. You've been through it all together, whether you're two years apart or ten years apart. You always have each other's back, even when you don't want to admit it. When you had your heart broken or suffered through a friend breakup, your sister was the first one there for you. One thing for sure is that you can never break this bond, and it will stay with you forever. No matter how many times you fight or disagree, you always find yourself right back at her side. While the bond between all siblings is strong, the strongest bond of all may be the one between two sisters, according to several scientific studies. Intramolecular covalent bonds are the hardest to break and are very stable being about 98% stronger than intermolecular bonds. Your sister may get on your nerves more than anyone else in your life, but she is also the only one you take a bullet for without hesitating for a second. Having a sister carries so many amazing perks that make life easier on so many different levels. In a sister, you have a forever friend, and it's not even close. A sister will carry your secrets to the grave and you will never have to worry about her giving you away. A sister is a constant shoulder to cry on, and no matter how many times you feel like you're being a burden, with her, that's never the case. And deep down, you're profoundly grateful for having someone you can always complain to without feeling like you're being annoying. She will listen to you like it's her job. Sisterhood is one of the most beautiful things in the world. Sisters share a unique bond that goes beyond explanation. Sometimes, it's like you two can literally read each other's minds. Sisters sharing a bond to kill is not uncommon but it is very rare. Raya and Sakina were sisters who shares the bond of killing other people. The story begins with the move of Raya and Sakina and their respective husbands from Upper Egypt to Alexandria in search of a better quality of life. During the 19th and 20th centuries, as a result of the Egyptian economy's crash due to World War I, the informal economy emerged, allowing Egypt's poor to earn money through unconventional jobs. It was this economic crash that also led Rea and Sakina's spouses to lose their cotton industry jobs. Accordingly, the two couples ran a brothel business that hosted a myriad of people from various social backgrounds. Each one of the four individuals had a role in running the brothel and recruiting prostitutes and male customers. And, as their financial situation worsened, they became increasingly reliant on the income it generated. Raya and Sakina were siblings. They, their husbands and two other men began killing women in the Laban neighborhood of Alexandria in the early 1900s. The police were plagued by increasing reports of missing women. Common details in the reports included the missing person's sex, the missing women were known to be wearing gold jewelry, and were known to be carrying a large amount of money. Another common detail was the report that many of the missing women were last seen with both or either one of the two sisters. Sukina was questioned several times because of the reports, but she managed to dodge any suspicions about her involvement. The six criminals were Rahia and her husband Hasbala, 
Sakina and her husband, Mohammed Abdel Al, in addition to two other men or Abi Hassan, and Abd El Razik Yosef. Between the 20th of December 1919 and the 12th of November 1920, the gang of Raya and Sakina murdered 17 women. The victims were prostitutes who used to work in the secret home that was managed by Raya and Sakina. Most of the victims knew Raya and Sakina and had been friends with them for years. After luring a victim to one of the four homes, they would offer her wine and liquor until she became inebriated. The four men would then attack the victim and constrain her movement. One would hold her ankles, one would surround her chest with his arms, and a third would hold her head tightly while the fourth suffocated her by forcibly placing a wet cloth on her mouth and nose until she stopped breathing. They would then steal her jewelry, money, and clothes. Afterwards, the men would remove the tiles of the floor, dig a hole, bury the corpse in it, and reset the tiles. The two sisters sold the stolen jewelry to a local jeweler, Ali Hazen, and divided the money among the six criminals. The gang's crimes had a consistent pattern. Rea and Sakina would befriend and lure wealthy women at the market into their house in the Laban neighborhood, offering them alcohol until they became intoxicated. Subsequently, their spouses, Hayes Abala and Abdella all would strangle the victims, take their jewelry, and bury their bodies underneath the house. At the time, wealthy women in Egypt did not place their money in banks preferring to solidify their wealth in the form of gold jewelry. The flamboyant and eye-catching jewelry would render the victims easy targets for the gang. On the morning of the 11th of December 1920, a passerby discovered human remains on the side of the road. The body was damaged beyond recognition and was completely dismembered. There was also a piece of black cloth and a striped black and white pair of socks near the body. However, these items did not help with the identification of the remains. In an unrelated incident, at about the same time in December, a man reported finding human remains beneath his floor while digging to fix a water pipe. Those findings provided the only evidence regarding the murders in the Laban neighborhood. After investigation, it was found that Raya and Sakina had been renting a home beside El Laban Police Department, where the bodies were buried, at the time when the women and girls disappeared. Also, they were friends with the El Laban Police Department. Raya, Sakina and their husbands were tried for murder. All four were convicted and were sentenced to death on the 16th of May 1921. Raya and Sakina became the first women to be executed by the modern state of Egypt. The sisters were executed by hanging. Two of them Raya and Sakina, stood on the same gallows side by side as the noose was placed on their necks. All four of them involved in crimes were executed at the end. Thank you for watching Death Row.